Okay, what I want to show today is how to do a crank sensor test on a Chrysler product. Uh, this is a 97 Jeep Grand Cherokee. All of these Chrysler systems use Hall Effects for their crank sensors. That's a three wire sensor, makes a digital square wave. On this particular design, the power feed is the 5 volt reference circuit, which is also the feed for all the other sensors. So this is a shared reference, shared power feed for this crank sensor. That's what we're looking at first. Uh, the crank sensor location, uh, it's on the bell housing of the transmission and I am connected right behind the distributor on a connector for the crank sensor. Kind of difficult to show you that, but I am in the five volt power feed or reference circuit for this Hall Effect. When you check the feed voltage on a Hall Effect, the first thing you want to remember is that it should be steady five all the time, as you can see in this picture. This is not good enough of a test. You always want to do loaded circuit tests to make sure you're not dropping this five volts out on a crank. There's nothing wrong with this vehicle. Uh, I've disabled the ASD relay so the car doesn't start. Typically when you're checking a crank sensor, you're doing it in a cranking condition for a no start and that's what we've done. We've simulated that. So go ahead and crank it. We want to make sure that our five volts stays at five volts. Go ahead, crank it. Okay, good. That is a good feed. That's the way you check the, the power feed to a Hall Effect. Do it while you're cranking. Load the circuit. Make sure voltage doesn't drop. As you saw, it stayed at five volts. So that is a good power feed. Next thing we're gonna do is the ground. Okay, so I, I moved my T-pin to the middle wire, which is my sensor ground wire. And one of the things I forgot to mention is how my meter is connected. I have my voltmeter positive lead going to each of these Hall Effect wires individually. And the voltmeter negative lead is connected to battery negative for all of these tests. So in the sensor ground circuit now. And this is going to be a ground to ground voltage drop test. You see we have 9 millivolts, that's good. What we look for generally is uh, less than 100 millivolts on a sensor ground. One of the things you want to understand though when you do sensor ground testing, if you're doing a cranking condition test, that you are going to have higher voltage during a crank than you will with the engine running or with just the key on engine off. And that's because the starter draws a huge amount of current flow and it loads the block with a lot of current and a lot of energy. And you're gonna see actually when we crank this an initial spike, which is actually that initial surge of current from the starter loading the block. So I'm okay with two, 300 millivolts on an initial crank. Um, so go ahead and do it, watch it. Keep cranking. Okay, so we had 190 millivolts and I told you you wanna see 100 millivolts or less. That number, again, 100 millivolts or less, that's gener generally gonna be with the engine running, you wanna see that kind of number, or with the key on engine off. A cranking condition, I'm okay with a little bit higher voltage. Again, that's block voltage is actually elevated from the high amperage of the starter, so that is a good sensor ground during a crank situation. In fact, what we'll do is I'll, pull, I'll plug this relay back in so you see a running, engine running number. Go ahead and start it. You see it, the engine running. You got seven millivolts, eight millivolts, engine running. That is a good sensor ground. Okay, go ahead, shut it off. Turn the key back on. So again, with the key on, with the key on or with the engine running, we have that number less than 100 millivolts on a sensor ground. Engine cranking, it can be a little higher. That's how you do a power and ground test on a Hall Effect. On this design only, five volt power. There are others that are out there that are 12 volt. There's other ones that are 10 volt. You need to know the system you're working on. That was the power and ground test. We're gonna focus on the signal circuit next. Okay, the next one is the sensor signal. I'm on the top wire in that connector back there. Again, using that T-pin. Voltmeter connected to ground. On the negative side, positive side, going to the sensor signal. And I'm gonna show you a couple different things here. First thing we're gonna show, what this looks like cranking. Go ahead and crank it. Keep cranking, keep cranking. All right, 
what we saw was around 400 to 600 millivolts. And the thing about this sensor is this is a zero to five volt square wave. So I'm showing you the limitations of the voltmeter here. When you're looking at an on off signal, what's it going to read is going to be unique to the characteristics of that signal. And so if it's low longer than it is high, it's going to have a lower average. If it's high longer than it is low, it's going to have a higher average. This is a zero to five volt square wave with an average reading of around 500 millivolts cranking. What you can try to do depends on the meter that you're using is use a min-max scale to try to catch that. And let's see if this meter will do it. Let's try it again. Go ahead and crank it. All right. So I saw a maximum of 500 and a minimum of 0.048. That is certainly not catching the zero five volt square wave, is it? We're looking at an average. I have a meter that the min-max scale is not even fast enough to pick it up. So what we can do in a situation like that, when you're dealing with signals like this that are on off square waves, if you want to see the full amplitude of the square wave, bump the key and what we'll do is we'll get those Hall Effect uh, windows, the shutters, in different positions and we should be able to catch this in a high position and a low position. Go ahead and bump the key. Do it again. Do it again. Again, 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 there it is right there. You see how long that took? Holy shit. Uh, it was just about getting that window for that Hall effect in the right position so you could see that high-low scale. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay, so what's the maximum number this Hall effect is producing? It's five volts, the minimum number you saw was like .04. There's your high-low signal. This is what you would do with a voltmeter. Uh, with the engine running, it's going to be the same thing. You're not going to see the high-low signal, so I'll show you what it looks like with the engine running. All right, go ahead and, and uh, start it up. I just put the ASD relay back in. Go ahead, start it. Same signal, crank sensor, engine running. This is a zero to five volt square wave. Average of 350 millivolts. That's pretty tough to do with a voltmeter, isn't it? So just giving you an idea, average voltage, Hall Effect crank sensor with a voltmeter. Go ahead, shut it off. Again, if you were doing something like this and you had a no start and you had a crank sensor trouble code, the procedures I just showed with this voltmeter you would follow. Check your power, check your ground. You need to know what your power feed is. Check your ground, check your signal to see full amplitude of a signal that's on off, very fast signal with an average reading voltmeter, you need to slow the crankshaft down. And that's what we did by bumping the key, is we got those windows on that flywheel to be in different positions, and we were trying to catch the signal with one of those blades in between, we were able to catch it. That would be a good crank sensor signal. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the scope now, which is absolutely the best way to do it. And also, I'm going to show you how to do a bypass test on this sensor. Okay, I'm going to show you the scope connections now. Same thing as the voltmeter. Got my scope positive lead connected to the signal wire. Scope negative lead connected to ground. No reason to show you the power and ground test again. It's going to be the same as it was for the voltmeter. What's going to be different is the signal circuit. So that's what we're focused on, the signal wire. Take a look at our, our scope here. All right, go ahead and crank it. Hold on, let me adjust my time base. I didn't like it at 10 milliseconds. Let's go 200 milliseconds. Time base is gonna depend on the system you're working on and what you're gonna do. Go ahead and crank it again. All right, crank it again. Okay, so we had 500 millivolt average again cranking on the voltmeter and you see our square waves those are zero to five volt square waves and you can understand the design now guys that the reason the average is so low with a zero to five volt square wave is look how much longer of a period of time that that signal is low compared to it is high so if you were to average this which is what your voltmeter does your average is not going to be two and a half volts even though it's a zero five volt square wave because the the high portion is so much smaller than the low portion 
that your average is going to be very, very near ground voltage, and that's what we we're looking at. So that's your crank sensor signal cranking. This is a Hall effect on a scope. Obviously, the scope is the way to go. Okay, what I'm going to show now is how to do a Hall effect bypass test on a Chrysler product. What I've done is I have the crank sensor disconnected. This is the same one we were doing the checks on before. And uh, what you want to do first is, of course, you need to know which one your signal wire is. But you want to disconnect the sensor and take a voltage reading with the key on and see what you have on the sensor. Okay, you can see on the voltmeter, sensor's unplugged. We got five volts on this circuit. And what that tells us about circuit design, again, section two in my book, is switch input circuit design. This is a pull down design. And what that means is this Hall effect has a transistor inside of it. When it switches on and off to make the square wave, what it's doing is it's pulling this five volt signal supplied from the computer down to ground. Transistor on pulls a 5 volt down to zero, near zero. Transistor off, 5 volts return. This is a 5 volt pull down design. This is a great design for diagnostics because if you had no signal on this wire with the sensor plugged in and you had zero volts all the time, a simple unplug it test of this sensor, if your voltage returns to 5 volts, what's that tell you about circuit integrity? That tells you it's good. The wiring is good from the computer all the way to the sensor and the computer's good and your focus would, get, would definitely go right to the sensor. Check your power in the ground to the sensor and change it if that's what you have. In a case where maybe you have steady five volts, we can do the same type of testing and in this case, we're gonna pull it to ground. We're gonna be the sensor. What, do, what does the sensor do? It pulls the circuit to ground. So I'm gonna take a test light and I'm gonna to touch it on and off of that T-pin on the harness side of the connector, computer side of the connector, and we're gonna pull that voltage down to ground and we should have some type of response. The type of response you're looking for is gonna vary from car to car and it's gonna vary on the sensor that you're checking. This is a crank sensor. We should be creating an RPM signal. The computer should react and respond to certain outputs that it would, it would respond to with an RPM signal. One of them is going to be the ASD relay, the fuel pump relay are going to turn on and off because the computer sees RPM. Certain solenoids under the hood may click. In some circumstances, you're going to be able to make the vehicle spark. Uh, this particular one needs both cam and crank signals at the same time for spark to take place, so I don't expect the coil to fire. But we're looking for a response. So I'm going to do the test, take a listen to the engine first, and then I'll show you what else we can look at. Test lights connected to ground because this is a pull down design. And I'm just going to touch this test light on and off to my T-pin that's connected to the signal wire on the crank sensor. Okay, test light to ground. Touch it on and off the signal wire. You hear the clicking taking place? I'm going to be quiet so you hear it. Just the fact that you hear that clicking tells you that signal circuit is good, the computer's reacting to it. That's how you do a bypass test on a five volt pull down design hall effect. The other thing you can do if maybe you have a circuit that isn't reacting, that you hear nothing changing, is you can use some scan data to help you. And in this case, I have the scanner already connected and I'm gonna focus you in on a couple of data pids that we can use. And in this particular case, uh, we're going to use the crank count, which is uh, just to the right of the screen. It says crank count. We're at 12. When I touch this on and off, you're going to see that count change. Okay. Is there a reaction on this circuit? Yes, there is. The crank count is changing. Again, computer is seeing that signal, and that's basically an RPM input. Your RPM data isn't changing because you need both KM and crank on this engine for proper RPM calculation. But that's it. That's how you do a, a Hall Effect bypass test on a Chrysler 5-volt pull-down type crank sensor.